I want to do some word problems involving the antiderivative. These actually, there's not a whole lot to say about it. You just have to see how it's done and then you can do it. Um, the antiderivative actually is useful in a lot of real situations. And um, the basic thing that makes the antiderivative useful, at least in this context, it's useful in other contexts, but for now, here's one basic fact. This is an easy fact. What is the antiderivative of the derivative of something, right? If I have f prime on the inside, what is the antiderivative of the derivative? Well, what do you think? Uh, the antiderivative is meant to do the derivative backwards. It's like to undo the derivative. So actually what this is, is it's just the original function again uh, with the plus c. That's because the antiderivative um, always has an extra constant in it. All right, that's that's really how it is, right? The uh, antiderivative is equal to the um, the antiderivative of the derivative is the original function. All right, um, basic fact, but you can actually use this to do a lot of things. The way you can use this is if somebody tells you what the antiderivative, uh, uh, sorry, somebody tells you what the derivative is, you can use the antiderivative to figure out the original function. This plus c actually does cause a little bit of strangeness that you have to deal with, but let's just uh, try some examples. We'll see how it goes. All right, here's an example to try out. If f prime of x is 2 to the 3x and f of 0 equals 10, then find f of x, and in parentheses I say, with no arbitrary constants. That means I don't want to see a plus C in your answer. I just want a formula for f of x with no uh, no unknowns, all right? Uh, this kind of a situation here, this is actually, there's a name for this. This is called an initial value problem because of this part right here. I gave you some thing, some one little bit of information about the real function. Here, this I'm telling you what the derivative is. Here, I'm talking about the actual function has this one additional property which you can think of this as like an initial value because i'm saying what happens when you plug in zero all right this is called an initial value problem can you find the original function the answer is yes you can and the way to do it is by using the antiderivative so f of x here because of what i just said is equal to the integral of f prime of x dx and we can do this you plug that in integral of 2 to the 3x dx and I hope you remember your formula for something that looks like that. This would be the integral of a to the kx dx. And the answer is uh, a to the, well, 1 over k ln a, a to the kx plus c, right? That was that formula. I hope you remembered it. Anyway, in this case, what we get is 1 over 3 natural log of 2 times 2 to the 3x plus c. Okay, that's what f of x is. You're pretty much done at this point, although not quite. The question was find f of x. But over here, with no arbitrary constants, I have the plus c. We got to somehow figure out what is the c. We can actually, in this case, solve for the c. And the way you do that is by using that little bit right there. So let me copy down what I got so far. All right, we have f of x is this, and f of 0 equals 10. Does that allow you to figure out what the C is? You bet it does. So what we can do with this is you plug 0 for x and then set it equal to 10, right? This means when you plug in 0 for x, the answer is 10. So I can say this, 10 equals, over here I plug in 0 for x, 1 over 3 ln 2, 2 to the 3 times 0 plus c. And now, can you solve for c? I think you can. 2 to the 3 times 0, this is going to be 0 in the exponent, so 2 to the 0 is 1. So it says 10 equals 1 over 3 ln 2 times 1, right? 2 to the 0 is 1. And then plus c. Solve for c. You get c equals, it's 10 minus that. 1 over 3 ln 2. All right. This here is a number. If you really care what that is, you can plug it into your calculator. And, uh, compute that as a number. Anyway, though, that's uh, my answer. So my final answer, I'll just squeeze it in over here. f of x equals 1 over 3 ln 2, 2 to the 3x plus 
that number, 10 minus 1 over 3 ln 2. There you go. That's how we do it, solving the initial value problem, okay? Let's just try one more. There's not really a whole lot more to it than that. Uh, let's try one more in the context of a word problem. Okay, here's a problem that's sort of uh, inspired by problems that you would see in the textbook. Let's say N of T is the number of cancer cells present in some kind of sample. All right, and let's say that we know this formula holds. So this is a formula which tells you about the derivative of the number of cells. This would be the rate of change of the number of cancer cells. In other words, just how fast the cancer is growing. All right, um, I think you can probably imagine in the real world, this will actually happen sometimes when you don't necessarily know how much cancer exists, but you do know, just because people know this, you do know how fast cancer grows typically. Uh, I don't actually know anything about cancer, but I'm just, I'm just imagining there are some situations when the derivative is actually easier to know about how fast it grows because this is something you can just measure in other samples. Um, oftentimes you know the derivative and this, this is an example like that. So let's say we know the derivative is like this. This is how fast it's growing. The t is measured in days. Part A, find n of t. Notice there's no prime there, all right? So this would be the actual number, not the growth Assuming there are 300 cells present at the start, that would be times zero. And then part B, use this from part A to find the number of cells on day 10. All right, let's just get to it. Okay, for the part A, our job is to find N of T, right? And how do you get that? You integrate the derivative, N prime of T dt. Okay, and what's it going to be? Uh, you fill in that formula, 60e to the... 3t dt, and now we do the integral. The 60 can just come out, it doesn't matter. What is the integral of e to the 3t? It's 1 over 3 e to the 3t plus c. All right, uh, usually I don't care about simplifying, but just because we're going to have to do some more stuff with this, you might as well simplify. There's not much you can do, but you can multiply 60 times the third is 20. So this is 20 e to the 3t plus c. That's n of t, right? Okay. Now, our job for part A was to find a formula for N of T, but they don't want the, uh, we don't want the extra plus C in there. How do we figure out what the plus C is? As in the other problem, the plus C, you can compute it or you can solve for the C by plugging in a specific initial condition. And in this problem, it said the number of cells is 300 at the start. What that means is the number of, uh, you could write it this way, N of T equal 300 at time t equals zero, right? You have to translate a little bit what the words say, but this is what the words mean. n of t is 300 when time is zero. In other words, n of zero equals 300. That's that's what that all means, right? So what I'm going to do is plug in t equals zero and then set the whole thing equal to 300. Let's do that. All right, I'm going to plug in t equals zero and set the whole thing equal to 300. So 300 equals, and now this with zero in for t, 20 e to the three times zero plus C. This whole e to the zero is going to be one. So it says 300 equals 20 plus c. C equals 280. So my final answer for part a is this, but I'm going to put the actual value of c in. N of t is 20 e to the 3t plus 280. All right, this here is my answer for part a. All right, let's move on to part b. Part B is actually quite a bit easier. Part B said, use your answer from part A to find the number of cells, number of cells, come on now, cells on day, what did it say? 10. Well, N of T is the number of cells on day T. So the number of cells on day 10, this is n of 10. And what is n of 10? It means you plug in 10 to this formula here. You don't have to do any more integrals or anything like that. So part B, my answer is n of 10, 10. That says 10, come on. n of 10 is, you just do this, plug in 10. 20 times e to the three times 10 plus 280. And you can't really do this without your calculator, right? 
I suppose the only thing you could do is what I is that right? Three times ten is thirty, but that hardly matters. If you want to know what this number is, you plug that into your calculator, and that's all. I think that'll do it.